for joining my Instagram live. My name is Makita Waterman. I'm the CEO of Top Writing Services Incorporated. I am doing Instagram Live Mondays on product and service marketing. Uh, the last couple of lives have been great. I have been heavily promoted. I appreciate the questions that are coming in. Um, checking my insights. Hi, Lucas. Just to make sure that I am sharing uh, tips and advice that can help each and every one of you, whether you are a personal and business brand. So I'm going to get straight into it. Thanks for joining, Rob. On a product and service marketing uh, tips for success, I am open for this chat to be as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions, leave them below as I'm doing my presentation and I will do my best uh, to answer. So uh, when we're doing our product marketing or service marketing, storytelling is something that is really, really uh, impactful when it comes to uh, building connection and stronger relationships with complete strangers, uh, especially here on Instagram. People like to go on Instagram looking for uh, companies to buy from because they feel it's a more personal experience, but nothing's more personal than telling stories. Hi, thanks for joining. And so when you're doing your uh, product marketing and you're telling your stories, I don't necessarily mean talking about you know, the ingredients of your products or things like that. I'm talking about real human life stories where people are touched uh, mentally or emotionally because really that's the only way that you can sell. If you don't have an online store and if you don't have like a really expensive website that you spent $10,000, $20,000 on, storytelling is really, really important with anything that you do when it comes to your products. So I'll give you some really good classic examples. Um, let's take a look at Nike or uh, The Gap. I don't know if you lived in, in the 90s. They used to have some really great Gap commercials. And one of the things about, hey, thanks for joining. One of the things about uh, Nike and some big brands when it comes to storytelling is I can't ever recall remembering a Nike shoe in an advertising or even Apple or something big. I'm sure your biggest brands are really good at this. I, I can't ever recall the gadget or the shoe or the dress, even Vogue magazine. Yes, the front cover is always the biggest thing. I think Beyonce was recently on it, but it's not so much the clothing. It's the story. It's something that grabs our attention. And if it's in the form of a commercial or a video or a post on social media, you really have to understand what makes your followers and your audience tick what makes them click, what makes them send you a message, what makes them purchase from you over the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of companies that sell pretty much the same thing that you and I both sell. So once you start to realize how your audience uh, reacts to your content um, or anything that you share on the internet, you want to repeat that process over and over again until whatever reason they just stop connecting. So. I'll give you an example of a Nike store. I don't know if you've ever watched any LeBron James or Serena Williams Nike commercials. Those com commercials move us, whether you're into Nike or not. I'm not a, sh um, a basketball shoe kind of woman, but I can sit here and say that every time I see a commercial from the beginning to the end, I'm captivated by the strength of the players or the message that they're trying to share. And that gets me to click on the link or click on the ad or check out their YouTube channel or check out their Instagram to dig a little bit more and see what this campaign is really all about. Thanks for joining A Digital. And so when you are uh, storytelling, always make sure that you start off with a beginning, a middle and an end. And your beginning has to inspire people and has to take them through a journey. Uh, now, I said in my last live, you don't have to be a New York best-selling author to tell stories. I mean, think of stories that you tell with your friends and your family when you went to your favorite um, music artist concert a couple of years ago and you came back and they asked you, how was that concert by, I don't know, Rihanna or Aerosmith, whatever you're into. You probably were sitting there for a good 20 or 15 minutes telling a story. You know, I got into the, the arena and it was filled with um, women at the front row. I couldn't believe how much they wanted to see uh, XYZ artist. I remember there was this guy that passed through the aisle and he dropped popcorn on my head. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Now that is amazing product marketing because I'm sure that next year, if that artist comes back around, they're going to ask you, you know, next year, hey, so-and-so is uh, performing. Can I come with you? That story, what you told me last year about what you experienced was out of this world. I want to experience too. 
So you know that um, your stories are, are touching people's hearts. They're reminding people, hey, how are you? They're reminding people of things from their childhood. I can sit here and say that um, product marketing and storytelling, if you can touch people's memories with a childhood memory that we all kind of know about, like, um, the, I don't know, um, uh, Christmas or um, Easter uh, or when we lo lost our tooth and our parents put the tooth under our pillow. Uh, unless you're, you can even use those kind of stories, childhood stories for selling products for adults. Try to think of something that's nostalgic. And if you don't know what nostalgic mean, it's just a word that basically says bringing somebody back to a memory in their life that they will never forget. And everybody understands it because we all live in North America. We all live in the same culture. So do your best to do some storytelling with your products. Um, you, again, you can do it in a video or you can just simply have the photo of a product and you can share that in a caption. Um, when you're trying to uh, connect with people's minds, um, product marketing is just more than captions. It's the colors you use. So when we're talking about a female audience, we're talking about women who are led by emotions. Yes, there are men, women who are more logical, but for the most part, women are led by emotion. So if more of your customer base are women, you obviously want to use softer colors in your advertising. You want to use words like uh, that make people feel sad or smile or laugh or nostalgic. Again, it goes back to a childhood memory or their first date or when they first met their first love. And you got to connect these stories into your captions and your videos because it's the, the sure enough way for somebody to not just pass your video, but to click on your website, check out what you're doing, send you an email uh, to ask you questions or just automatically purchase. Some people are just instantaneous shoppers where they see something, they, they don't have to be convinced, they don't have to check out your Instagram page, they purchase and that's what I call great marketing. Um, and obviously men, a little bit more logical. Um, I did some research and out of men and women, uh, women actually are the decision makers for the most part when it comes to uh, the household. So if you're buy, selling a product for families, if you're selling a product for women, you obviously want to know what their pain, parts, pain points are, what their issues are, and you want to explain uh, that in a story that leads them to want to contact you buy from you, tell their friends and the family about your products and services, etc. So um, making this uh, live as interactive as possible, if you have any questions whatsoever, as I'm going through this presentation, leave a comment and I will do my best to answer. So when you're launching your uh, product launch, your service launch, I really recommend that you do this several months in advance. Uh, three to four months in advance is ideal. And you don't just want to stop at social media and advertising. You want to go from uh, your product, hey, how are you, Fusion? You want to go from your product launch um, on social media. You want to do your paid advertising on the apps where your consumers or potential customers are using. You want to use email campaigns. You want to get out those newsletters. Um, you want to tell your friends and your family. You want to retarget emails to customers that are already purchased. And if you have the high budget technology on your website that recognizes when customers are coming back, whether they put something in a shopping cart, etc., you want to recognize that as well. If you have any items sitting in your shopping carts on your website, you want to retarget those people. Hopefully they obviously probably set, uh, provided you with an email. Send them a little message saying, hey, you know, we missed you, but it looks like you checked out uh, a couple of items uh, several, month, some, several months or several weeks ago. Just checking in to see if you're still interested. And by the way, we also have this pair of jeans that match with this shirt, or we have this soap that matches this with this cologne. Um, so try to retarget abandoned uh, shopping carts. Try to also include in that email a potential product or a service that you can add just to increase your sales. And uh, launch three to four months in advance again you want targeted ads on social media, email campaigns, newsletter campaigns. You want to do collaborations with um, companies in your industry that have a massive following that you might not have to, as of today. And a collaboration could be a paid collaboration. It could be an online, um, uh, I don't know, a presentation that one of your biggest competitors are doing. And they might not charge you, but for whatever customers you get from their pipeline or their customer base, 
on that online um, uh, chat or whatever it is that you're doing, they get maybe 15 or 25% for each customer. So try to think about collaborations, uh, influencers, people in your industry, in your city that um, have a, a massive base of people that would potentially buy from you. Reach out to them, send a DM, ask them, hey, we've got this launch going on in the next three to four months. We love what you're doing and we'd like to collaborate. Would you be interested in chatting on the phone or getting on a Zoom chat and talking about a potential collaboration? Um, and when you're sending out messages, uh, as most marketers know, marketing is, hey Adnan, how are you? Uh, marketing is a numbers game. So the more DMs you send to influencers and potential companies that have the same audience as you, the higher you have a chance of uh, at least a couple, of, if not more than a couple saying yes. So make sure that you just don't focus on one or two potential uh, collabs, but you're probably sending out massive 50, 100 emails um, or DMs every day or every month, reaching out to people who are influential that when you uh, put your brands together, whether it's on social media, an online event, you know, there's going to be a win-win uh, opportunity for the both of you, not just yourself. Other things that I can sit here and say when it comes to launching is if you have a big organization, uh, check out your customer purchasing habits, check out the surveys that you've done, whether they're anonymous surveys or customers just willingly um, did a, an online survey and find out what issues did they have with the last launch, issues they had. Hi, City Trace. Thanks for joining, Andre. Uh, issues that they had with um, your last product launch or products and things of that nature. Um, I really like the idea of launching product marketing or service marketing for products and services that are not necessarily being sold. So if you have a database or some kind of CRM technology that is showing uh, you know, the retail items or the services that are not being sold, why don't you do a quick launch now? Uh, launch it out now, uh, have a launch date up until March, maybe do a quick sale to kind of get rid of winter products or winter services or outdated 2020 services and try to rev up on that so you don't have unnecessary inventory sitting in your garage or in the, um, the uh, what do you call those places where you leave your products just kind of sitting in your store, you're kind of getting rid of everything for 2021 so you have nothing sitting around. Um, what else can I say about uh, launching products and services? Make it fun, make it exciting. Um, and I know there are just some industries that are really, really bland, like technology and things of that nature. There's nothing wrong with using your personality in these ads, there's nothing wrong with getting models who are super attractive. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, getting the most in extroverted person on your team who has the most bubbly and fascinating personality to be the front, right, and center of your um, campaigns if you don't wanna you know, purchase a spokesperson, et cetera, to help you out. You just wanna make your campaigns fun, exciting. You can add storytelling to your videos. You can add storytelling to your email campaigns. Uh, make it fun, relatable, you know, try not to use words that most people won't understand. Uh, even if they're experts in your industry, try to make it as easy as possible. So what's the way to hire a sale agent? Uh, that's a good question, Adan. I believe you might want to go to LinkedIn. Uh, you might have to pay for that post. I think it's uh, for every person that clicks on your job post on LinkedIn, you have to pay. Or you can just open up a business account or a personal account and put out a design, put it on your uh, post and just market it until you find the right person. Um, or just hashtag uh, sales agent on Instagram and on YouTube um, or even uh, LinkedIn and check to see if you see somebody that you like, reach out to them and go from there. I think that should definitely help. Uh, what else can I say about launching? I think that's it for the most part. Um, uh, Rob said, you are highly intelligent, beautiful, and a blessing to the world. I have a client and have to run. Thank you for being Simply Magnificent in every way possible. And thank you for your support, Rob. You've been uh, following me for a good year now, and I appreciate it. Thank you. And enjoy your night. Good luck. Okay, so we're going to get into this SWOT analysis. Uh, SWOT analysis, uh, if you went to business school uh, or took any kind of online course with respect to business, this is something that... Um, Marketing teams kind of talk about this a lot. If you have a big company with marketing teams, hopefully they're talking about the SWOT analysis from 2020 to get you ready for the, this year. So SWOT just basic, basically means um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
And this is an assessment or a review that you have to do with your company. And you also have to do it with maybe some of your biggest competitors. So strengths would be, you know, what are your biggest strengths in marketing, in sales, in customer service? Are you getting repeat customers? Are you losing customers? And why are you losing customers? So start writing down a list of your strengths uh, and the strengths of your competitors. And I'm not sure if you can do an actual document, but I'm sure that you can create some kind of an infographic that might be easy for everybody to kind of have on hand. Thanks for joining Ready In. Um, so you want to start off with strengths, your weaknesses. You have to be honest with yourself as a company and ask yourself when it comes to your marketing or selling or your business development, what weaknesses have you experienced last year and the years prior? And take a look. Obviously, last year, a lot of people and companies were hit um, because of the pandemic. So you still want to review your weaknesses and the weaknesses uh, in every area of your company because marketing it's just not about the posts that we share on social media. If you have a medium size to a big company, it comes down from the executive team to uh, customer service, marketing, uh, and your weaknesses. It's an overall kind of review um, that might be a little difficult to understand now, but trust me, if your executives are not on board with your marketing, if they're not approving um, marketing budgets on time before Valentine's Day, if um, your team is not really going all in and really making sure that your marketing message is on point and being honest with you as a business owner, those, weak, those are some examples of weaknesses. Now, opportunities. Opportunities are pretty much areas of ways that you can improve your content, your visuals, your brand logo, whatever it is, your customer service, um, your follower service. You know, I, re I have a video that I'm going to be sharing this evening about follower appreciation which to me is the same as customers appreciation not everybody that follows us is going to purchase from us but it doesn't mean that they're not going to refer you to friends and family and it doesn't mean that they're not going to be loyal people who might eventually be customers or just loyal to leaving comments and supporting your content um, so take a look at the opportunities for improvement i recommend that you do this if you have time every week if not every week every month, every quarter, try not to go past every three months because marketing and customer behavior is changing. You and I both know that we're all purchasing differently. A lot of people are just buying um, essentials or necessities, but um, when it comes to marketing, you still need to see where you kind of fell off the map last year. What were you not doing? Were you not spending more time on Instagram? Uh, were you not opening an uh, account on TikTok or LinkedIn to leverage different audiences and market yourself more on different platforms? These are things that we all have to kind of think about. And then threats. Threats are uh, things that we can't control. The economy, um, the weather, uh, a big competitor just opened up the same kind of uh, store as we did down the street. Thanks for joining, Sarah. Um, so you want to take a look at your SWOT analysis, all of your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities and the threats and you want to write them down and ask yourself if you're doing this by yourself, you're running your own business or if you have a couple of employees, take a look at this SWOT analysis and see where you can improve um, and don't be too concerned about the weaknesses and the threats. Uh, in business, we all know that we're here to say, hi Cabral, how are you? Uh, we're here to solve problems and if you take a little challenge like what happened last year and stop you from running your business or even continuing to share content on social media, it can be a detriment to your reputation and what you do next and um, just everything, the all-encompassing reality of uh, branding and social media. So I mentioned earlier, if, if anybody has any questions about any of the content I've been sharing or product and service marketing, share it below. I'm going to do my best to answer your questions while I'm doing this uh, short presentation. And then the last part that I have is community engagement. So community engagement is, uh, let's just pretend like Instagram is a neighborhood. Your followers are in your neighborhood, um, whether it's a product or a service that you're selling. And community engagement is just basically creating marketing content and sharing your products and services in a way that sparks conversations and you can do this easily by asking two or three questions in your captions um, you can even do this simply by thinking about things that are happening in the world right now that are connected to what it is that you're doing 
so that you can really get an understanding of uh, what people are saying, what they're thinking, where their thought process is when it comes to your products and services without really showing your products and services, um, and really sparking conversation so that they are looking forward to the next video and the next post that you share. Because if we make our content all about me, 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 or my company, my company, my company, and we're not really creating content that gets people to answer a question, to share a personal experience, to um, be honest with you about whether they want to see new things, new content or new topics from you or not, you are really missing out on opportunities. Um, the new age of social media is quickly changing. I really do believe that uh, apps like TikTok are super successful um, simply because it's all about community. Um, and I'm not saying that Instagram doesn't foster and encourage community-based posts, but Instagram, uh, sorry, a TikTok, people usually ask a lot of questions in their videos. There's not much space for captions, but they are asking questions. They are saying, what do you think? And, um, you know, press the like button or double tap if you agreed and share this. So um, with everything that you do, try to just think about your community, think about the issues that they're experiencing right now. Um, if there's a certain product that you have right now on the shelf and for whatever reason, it's been sitting there since June of last year, you have to ask yourself, um, why is nobody buying this product? Or if you've had a, a service that you launched spring of last year and for whatever reason, people are skipping over that service, but they're still buying other services from you, why is that happening? And it can be as easy as putting up a post and saying, you know, um, just want to get your feedback, everybody. Let me know what you think about this jacket. Let me know if you think about this service. Do you really think it's going to help you? Do you think it looks outdated? And get that feedback. Don't be afraid for people to be to tell you completely that's an ugly jacket. That might be the reason why nobody's buying it or that service isn't going to really help mothers with XYZ or men who are having this issue or um, it's not going to help uh, social influencers that need to be inspired. So take the honesty as a gift. Um, you always want to be dishing for information and feedback from your audience because the more they tell you, the more you can change, the more you can um, restructure your products and your services and your me your uh, messaging and the way that you and your team simply show up on the internet especially here on Instagram so I know I had just a couple of points here I'll just recap with the product storytelling or service storytelling you want to touch the hearts and minds of your audience and one of the best ways of doing that or bringing your stories back to a time in our lives that we'll never forget, like a time in childhood or uh, the time we got sick or the time that we met our first um, boyfriend or girlfriend or the time that we were hungry and we just kind of um, ate this food and we never stopped eating it, you know, for the rest of our life. So try to think about stories that will bring uh, people back to their childhood or something that everybody in your community or your online tribe will understand. Uh, something that people are going to be like, huh, what is that? I don't do that. So you really have to know your audience when you're um, storytelling so that when you, you tell the story, they're not asking 50 questions in the caption. They're responding to the story like, oh my goodness, I love that video. It reminds me of when I took my first road trip to XYZ, etc. Um, when you're dealing with women, uh, women usually are the, bre not the breadwinners, but they are usually the deci decision makers in a home when it comes to purchasing. So women, we're usually led by our emotions. So make sure that your images, your contents and colors that you're using in your stories match the female audience or match your audience. And remember, there are different age groups and mindsets. A millennial thinks different than a baby boomer. A baby boomer spends way different than a Generation Z. A single mom spends way different than, um, you know, a father uh, and, and, you know, a family of six children. So you really have to think about the subgroups of your audience when you're telling stories. But for the most part, tell, tell stories that are related to the culture of the people that you're targeting. Uh, launching. I had mentioned launching. It's always good to launch your product and service at least three to six months in uh, three. I'd say three to four months in advance. 
Don't just launch on social, launch in an email blast, launch in your blog, do paid advertising, um, collaborate with social influencers, collaborate with uh, businesses that have the same audience as you, but they might have a larger following, and just make sure that your uh, launching makes sense. It's timely, it's effortless, it's fun, it's exciting, it grabs people's attention, it inspires people to share whatever it is that you're sharing because your videos and your messaging is that great. Um, SWOT analysis, think about your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities of improvements and the threats. Um, and again, that could be um, the economy or weather or maybe a big competitor franchise that is internationally known just opened across the street from you. These are the little things that we uh, con uh, consistently need to keep looking at just to make sure that we are on point, we're not missing the mark, and we are uh, delivering on our marketing and our branding. And then last but not least, community engagement. We want to create content that's going to make people think, laugh, smile, or take action. We want to make sure that our captions are filled with a couple of questions and um, storytelling and leading to some kind of call to action, whether it's Click link in bio to download uh, my ebook or click link in bio to register for my upcoming online event and really get those uh, captions going and those videos going, making people uh, interested and ready to take action or at least reach out to you and ask questions if they feel the need to do so. So I'll leave the uh, line open for questions. I don't, we don't have to necessarily focus on product marketing. You can ask me about anything that I've been sharing. I know some of you just recently uh, started following me last year, and some of you have been with me for the past two and a half, three years. So if there's anything that is on your mind, let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. As someone is potentially typing, I'll just kind of think if there's anything else that I want to share for product marketing. Uh, with respect to Instagram, Try to use as many features as you can. Um, and if you are using YouTube and you have a big following on other apps, promote your Instagram page. Uh, some people are getting more followers on Instagram because they are promoting that they even have an account on their YouTube channel, on TikTok, on LinkedIn. Um, so you, there's nothing wrong with transferring over um, followers from one app to the other. It's a great way to build stronger relationships um, since Instagram is kind of like more personal than LinkedIn, for example, or maybe even YouTube, depending on the uh, YouTuber, etc. Um, excellent ideas and presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. I appreciate that. All right, everybody. I don't see any questions here, but uh, the good news is, is I go live every Monday morning, uh, sorry, Monday afternoon uh, or evening at 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. I believe that's 4 p.m. Pacific Central Time and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have not quite thought about a topic for the following Monday, but every Wednesday I put out a post uh, just reminding people of what to expect from me. So Andre says, how would you tie in contests with marketing? That's a good question, Andre. Um, contests are really, really good. Uh, I think that as long as uh, your caption is really catchy, uh, you can do a video uh, to kind of do a giveaway or a contest or even just to have a regular post. Um, and it's a great way for marketing because especially here on Instagram, if you ask people, tag somebody who might like this or tag somebody in the comments who is XYZ or likes this or might need this or might feel inspired by this, it's a great way for people who are tagged in the comments to look at your profile and ask themselves whether they want to um, follow you or not. Um, and that's kind of a, it's, it's a community based post is what we kind of call it in our world of marketing. Thanks for joining Just Fangs. And so yeah, contests are a great way to market your services or your products. It's a great way to get people to, um, tag their friends and their family, their business partners or people that they might think would, um, benefit from your page. And it's also a great way too to just kind of like reignite new relationships or just uh, kind of like a hello again to uh, your audience members that usually probably don't correspond or engage with your post. So uh, yeah, contests are a great way. Giveaways are a great way uh, for marketing um, and really getting your name out there. Um, and yeah, it's just really a good way to kind of show the audience and your followers that you're available in the community. 
you are think you have them on the top of your mind, which is essentially people want to feel special and important, which, which is uh, which why contests and giveaways are a good way to kind of bring your community together, get them kind of you know participating in whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, instructions can be laid out in your video or on the actual uh, photo post, or you can put the the instructions in the captions. I recommend that you put it um, in the photo post or the video post and in the captions just for the people that are kind of like swiping by. But that is a great way to get more people to notice you and to uh, find out who you are and what you do with your business. Uh, what else can I say about contests and marketing? And yeah, and I, I also believe if you're going to do an Instagram um, marketing post for a contest, it's also a good idea to do that contest on other apps like LinkedIn or TikTok, um, and even do an email blast or a blog post, just kind of remembering, um, really think marketing is a numbers game, as I mentioned earlier. So the more people know what you're doing, uh, the better it is for you. And um, I try my best not to just solely focus on Instagram. When I do announcements, I try to take over that caption and put it over to um, uh, LinkedIn and sometimes even Twitter, just to kind of let people know that I've got things going on and see if they want to participate. Hey, Chesel Designs, how are you? Thanks for joining tonight. So I went through most of my presentation on product and service marketing, but I am here to answer any questions that you have. I know I share a lot of content throughout uh, the day on my page. So if there's anything that has caught your mind, um, or caught your attention that you have any questions about. I'm here to answer your questions for another five or 10 minutes. I'm doing my best to stay dedicated to showing up live every Monday evening because I know a lot of people have questions and um, sometimes people are nervous to look out for us on LinkedIn, by the way, thanks, thanks to you. Oh yeah, that's great. I saw your comment the other day on my video. I appreciate you joining me there. I like LinkedIn because you can click on uh, people's links and it goes out. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really do that on Instagram unless I think you are doing it on IGTV. I believe if you put a link on IGTV, it might show it in the captions, but I really like the space on LinkedIn. I think it's a growing app. I still feel like it's very undervalued. I believe a lot of uh, businesses, whether they're business to business, or business to consumer, they a lot of people still think it's just an app where people apply for a job, which is true, but uh, LinkedIn is becoming a business app and I'm seeing more um, business influencers and CEOs really sharing their presence on the app, which is great. And um, if you really are consistent and you show up several times a day with your posts on LinkedIn, uh, I myself, I get leads every week on LinkedIn and sometimes I just send messages like happy anniversary when I see a notification and then that leads to somebody remembering the posts that I constantly keep sharing every day on LinkedIn and then going in my DMs and saying, I wanna set up a time to chat and see what kind of marketing services that you offer. And, and you'd be surprised. There are people that are gonna reach out to you on LinkedIn uh, that don't like anything. Don't They don't like your contents, they don't leave comments and they just come out of nowhere. And it's the same thing on Instagram. So. Uh, attention arbitrage is like a big thing. I know Gary Vaynerchuk talks about that. Um, but the more attention that you can grab uh, and the more content that you can share on all of your platforms, the better it is for you. I don't know if you notice, ladies and gen gentlemen, thanks for joining, Noor. But on the weekend, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of people do, they don't post as much, but I do my best to stay consistent and keep sharing those um, 69 Instagram stories and those three posts on the weekend because I know most people aren't posting, but I know one thing's for sure, everybody either wakes up uh, to open up their Instagram or they go to sleep to open up their Instagram. So I wanna make sure that each and every one of you remember me, so um, I try not to follow what everybody else is doing and it's so easy to do that. Oh, well, the other HVAC company or the other you know, business coach isn't posting on the weekend, so I don't have to. I recommend that you do and try to save your time. Use free apps like Buffer and use uh, Instagram uh, Studio, Creator Studio, which is Facebook Creator Studio, and schedule those posts um, and try your best to uh, respond within an hour on Instagram. The way the algorithm works is if you can respond to your comments and your direct messages within an hour of somebody communicating with you, it signals to Instagram, this person is active, uh, and we, we appreciate that they're active. And 
a trick on Instagram that I haven't quite shared. Your DM activity is way more uh, valuable than anything else. So when you get a new follower, if you're into this, send them a voice note and look at their page and take a look at where they're from and try not to just say, hey, thanks for following me. If you have any questions, let me know. But take a look at them and see where they're from, what they do, and try to be a little bit personal. Um, the more activities you have in your DMs, even if you're just looking through people's Instagram stories and you're liking it or you're leaving a comment or you're communicating with them, it's signaling to the Instagram algorithm that you are active and the more active you are, and when I say active, I'm not talking about you're just streaming and looking at people's content, but the more you're communicating um, and leaving comments and uh, socializing with people on this app, the more Instagram will reward you. And I can't tell you how many hours per day you can do that, but if you can just dedicate an hour a day, maybe 15 minutes uh, right before you're about to start business, 15 minutes for break, 50 minutes for lunch, and you kind of like, you know, space it out, um, the better you are on this app. And if you can get people to share, I've noticed that the, the voice note engagement does work. Yeah, it definitely works. Uh, anytime I get a follower, I send a quick voice note, um, just reminding them that I go live every Monday evening. If they have any questions, I'm here to uh, answer questions that they have. And sometimes if I like what I see, thanks for joining all the way from Nigeria. How are you, Paul? I try to um, just really spark some conversations because people are not used to that. Um, I had a lot of people who said, wow, I wasn't expecting your voice note. I never got a voice note. I didn't even know that I can do voice notes on, hey, 77 wrong, how are you? I didn't even know that I can do voice notes on uh, Instagram. So it's surprising people. It's sharing that really, really nice um, hello. And it's not just following. And I mean, it's so easy. Instagram is one of those apps where people can follow you and a year goes by, they forget about you because you didn't really communicate with them. So even if you don't send DMs like that, just scroll through your stories. And if you see something you like, leave a comment and just say, oh, nice dress or wow, happy birthday or happy wedding anniversary and just kind of try to socialize because that's what these apps are made for. They're made for us to communicate with people and it's not just about putting out content and hoping that the customers and the followers and the devoted uh, fans come. It's really about creating community. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And so, yeah, um, I don't see any questions here. But have no fear, I have the Canada Business Show coming up regularly. I don't have any new slots yet. Haven't reached out to anybody, but if anyone knows a Canadian business owner that um, might need some uh, exposure, I do my Instagram lives going live. If you think that you would wanna get on this show, let me know after uh, this, send me a DM. And uh, stay tuned for my Instagram live Mondays, every Monday, same time, same place, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and I believe that is 4 p.m. Pacific Central Time. I'm showing up. Uh, Wednesday, I'll have the announcement on my page about the topic. Uh, I usually look at my insights to see what is working in the past three, um, seven days to three months and see what really works. And I try my best to share um, topics that each and every one of you like. And thank goodness for technology and insights. That's the only reason, that's the only way I know uh, what you like and what you don't like is just really checking my insights a week in advance and saying, okay, this carousel or this photo or this video really did well. Why don't I just expand on this topic and go live and answer questions? Well, all right, everybody, I'm gonna save this video. I'm gonna share the whole video if you weren't here from the very beginning for the presentation on my YouTube channel tomorrow morning at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 11 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. It'll be up on my YouTube channel, so click link in bio and check that out. And if you have any questions that maybe you didn't wanna share on this live, um, or if you have any feedback, let me know in the DMs. And I look forward to seeing your content and getting to know each and every one of you soon. Happy New Year, uh, stay safe, and hope to see you next Monday. Bye everybody.